Hey everyone, the story of the BBC is in many ways a sad one, an institution that was once on the cutting edge of drama, comedy and even technology, now languishing as dated, increasingly irrelevant and profoundly out of touch with modern society. Alongside the likes of YouTube or HBO, the BBC is a bit like seeing the Archbishop of Canterbury hanging out in a West End nightclub. I was a kid when Saturday Night TV was pulling in 10 million viewers, so maybe a better analogy would be like it's a bit like going to a school reunion and finding out that the cool kid that once painted a swear word in the head teacher's car is now a clerk for the local council and votes Labour and drives a 17-year-old Deo that some kid scrawled a swear word across. Uh, for the record, that's not me, I drive a Mazda. And the last time I was at a town hall, it was to see a tribute act of UB40. They were called WD40. You know, started out a bit rusty, but got better as the evening went on. I digress though. I said millions of viewers, and to give you a scale of how things have changed, the once mocked show Noel's House Party used to regularly bring in over 15 million viewers on a Saturday night. Even Harry and Meghan's interview couldn't beat those kind of ratings, although they could have brought on Mr Blobby and discussed how a senior royal once made disparaging remarks about his garish colour scheme. Let's look at Saturday Night TV this week. 15 million is probably more than all the networks combined will get, but if you're looking at the BBC, well, more people are probably going to tune in and watch the Netflix shareholder meeting, let alone the TV programmes that Netflix were actually producing. The BBC once produced good TV though, everything from I Claudius to Faulty Towers to Blue Peter, and in 1980 when they broadcast live footage of the Iranian embassy siege, the idea was to broadcast the breaking news, not to provide a platform to the Labour Party so they could somehow blame the siege on NHS spending cuts. You know, I also think it's very telling that the BBC are always trying to cut back in religious programming, but they don't often enjoy commissioning programmes that prominently feature the NHS. You know, I can't believe casualties still going, maybe they're waiting for one of the patients to finally get to the top of the waiting list for a new hip. Public services, though, funded of course by high taxes, are seemingly the only religion that people who work at the BBC believe in, other than of course praying to the pictures of the Blessed Lady Greta Thunberg. You know, admittedly it probably does save a lot of carbon emissions, because when people see Greta's face in the news they just turn off the TV. And most of the shows in BBC4 are recycled, so that's doing their part, I guess. In the 1990s, though, the BBC Comedy Zone on Friday night was a golden age. Several hours worth of fantastic writing, you know, the fast show Red Dwarf, Shooting Stars Bottom, The League of Gentlemen, one after the other. Whereas this Friday, there's one show on offer, Mrs Burns Boys, which is not funny, but it does feature a man wearing a dress. So I guess the idea, if not to entertain then, is to at least inform and educate the public to reinforce their outlandish belief that a 65-year-old Irishman dressing up as a lady is a perfectly normal thing. What is of course not a normal thing is a television licence that costs three times as much as a gun licence. What next? Perhaps a sock licence where you have to pay an extra hundred quid in order to get colour. The education, or let's be honest here and call it propaganda, thing is really where the crux of it all lies. The idea that the prime objective for the BBC is not to produce television but to fulfil a self-appointed role as a social engineer. To try and fix a society that they see as flawed and racist and ob obsessed with ridiculous things like earning money or trying to afford a nicer house or a second car. You know, those things should be restricted to people who have earned money the correct way, like by commissioning television programmes. Perhaps shows like a 21st century version of Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, where Ebenezer renounces his old ways and becomes transgender. Or how about a big period drama like Tolstoy, except that the actors portraying 19th century Russia will all be Afro-Caribbean, and maybe in the last episode the Tsar decides to abolish university tuition fees. How about a remake of Only Fools and Horses, where a Del Boy opens the door of a newly arrived shipping container and finds a family of illegal migrants inside and the series reveals itself to be a gritty drama about racial politics in South London, and Rodney, far from being a lovable plonker, is instead portrayed as a brutal imperialist who reads the Daily Mail and watches football and goes to the sort of pubs where they serve food on a plate rather than a piece of slate roof like you're supposed to. You know, I'll call that show Only Fools and Trojan Horses, and the rights can be yours for ten grand if anyone's interested. Yeah, the current situation was best summed up when the actor Idris Elba was recently criticised for not being black enough for his show Luther. You know, further questioning revealed that the BBC execs thought that the show was flawed and that he should have mostly ethnic friends and be seen eating jerked chicken. That in itself is a profoundly racist set of lazy assumptions to make, and yet it came from Miranda Wayland, the BBC's diversity chief. You know, imagine a world where a Conservative cabinet minister had made that sort of social commentary, and you quickly realise that the rules are about as far apart as if you compared the Saudi Arabian Sharia rules with the set of drinking rules my old student bar used to have posted on the wall back in the day. Admittedly, it's not as quite far apart as the two sets of rules that dictate how many genders there are. It's either several dozen, or it's sometimes maybe just two, if it's Radio 4 talking about the gender pay gap. Or, of course, if the BBC is promoting women's football largely, owing to it being about the only thing they can afford to show these days. You might just think if you have more genders than there are types of Kit Kat, then we're in trouble as a society. You know, what's that old joke that genders are a bit like the twin towers? There used to be two of them, but now it's a touchy subject. Anyway, I've been ranting for long enough, so I'll just close in saying that the archive that is the internet is a wonderful thing these days, and I no longer watch nor pay for the BBC anyway. And if you want to see some of your politically incorrect stars, most of them are still touring. You know, after the cruise industry recovers, you might even get to see a show for free on your way to Greece. 
actually, you know, thinking about it, if I was on a ferry or a cruise, I'd probably rather take my chances in the COVID infested bar than risk going to see the likes of Dave Lee Travis or Rob Harris doing their lunchtime matinee. You remember back in the day, what was that one? The judge remarked, quote, there's some grey walls and bars in the windows. Can you guess what it is yet, Rolf? Anyway, see you next week. Like these, click subscribe.